What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Z-Man Show. Again, I'm your host, Mike Schilling, here with another awesome episode of Chernobyl. So we're talking episode two. It's called Please Stay Calm, or Please Remain Calm, pardon me. And, uh, guys, there's just so much information packed into these episodes. I mean, just, I never quite, I never understood Chernobyl, really. I mean, it, was, it always fascinated me, but never took the time to learn anything about it. And this episode is just full of amazing details, and I just want to talk over some of those things. Uh, this is going to be full of spoilers. I want to talk the entire episode. So, if you have, uh, if you've not seen it yet, uh, definitely do not watch this yet, because I'm going to spoil through all of it. So, I actually have some footage here I want to play in the background. Well, actually, it's going to kind of take over, and it's going to be like the trailer, and so you can see just a little bit more about the episode. It's a short one, but I want to try and get through as much of this stuff as I can, so I say let's go ahead and get straight to it. So, um, we're at the Institute of Nuclear Energy, and uh, it's in Minsk, which... Um, it's 8.30 a.m., April 26, seven hours after the explosion. And uh, Yolana, which is uh, played by Emily Watson, a very talented actress. She's played in, she played in Everest. She played in Red Dragon. She was the blind woman uh, who had the um, love interest with the, uh, the the main antagonist, the bad guy. Anyways, she's so awesome. So uh, her and another guy are in uh, their building, and they open their windows, and an alarm goes off immediately. And, of course, she works in physics and are as a physicist excuse me and knows everything about pretty much you know, radiation and these reactors and whatnot and she basically goes over to this machine see what it's measuring and she's like no this this is a uranium thing this is not good and um they basically go she gets a swab off the window she goes back to analyze it she realizes it's a uranium decay as the machine kind of spits it out to her uh they basically try contacting chernobyl with no answer uh first they kind of contacted another nearby plant to see if it could be a possibly be them but it it wasn't. So then they would try to get in touch with Chernobyl. No answer. And why? Because those jackasses pretty much cut off all communication so that people in the city could not panic and spread rumors and all that stuff. Or pretty much more like spread the truth, right? And so um, in Chernobyl, the hospital's overflowing. Um, all of their clothes are contaminated with the radiation. They can't even touch it. One of the main uh, nurses, she's carrying the stuff out. And, and she's telling them, don't touch these people. Don't do this or that. And she looks at her hands and they're all burned just from touching the clothing. I mean, this is like blowing my mind. I just, it's just crazy. Um, so then we, we come back to Professor it's, uh, Valerie Le, uh, Lego. I'm going to say it wrong. It's Legosov. I think it's Legosov. I'm going to say that wrong a thousand times until I get it right. But... Um, uh, again, he reads the report and is super alarmed. He's about to go into the main committee where he's going to talk to all the big big wigs and basically tell them what's what and what's going on. And uh, you can tell by his face. And again, this is played by Jared Harris. And Jared is an amazing actor. I love this guy. He's been in a lot of awesome things. Look him up on IMDb. Uh, you will not be disappointed watching any movie that he's ever been in. He actually was in one of the Resident Evil movies. I know you're like Resident Evil, but still, he played a great part in that movie. So his acting was always always awesome um anyways he's played some other great roles too but either way he goes into uh the meeting he meets up with uh, stellan skarsgård as um, the actor as well as many others and stellan is the uh, playing as boris skirbina and he is basically leading this task force to pretty much more or less cover up the incident i mean that's pretty much what's going down here but um he doesn't understand reactors. He doesn't understand about fusion, vision, any of that any of that stuff. So uh, that's why pretty much Jared Harris's character is there. Lego stuff. And I'm starting to get it, guys. So um, so he's in there, and they're trying to handle the incident. So thank goodness for Lego stuff because he is like the only one that has any sense whatsoever. Everybody else is pretty much trying to just kind of say, yeah, meeting adjourned. Sounds like we got it all covered. He's like, we do not have this covered. Uh, the 3.61 REMS, and again, that's the the measurement for the amount of radiation going on, which, by the way, was only the max that their decimeter could read at that time. That means it could be far more than that. Anyways, it's just ridiculous. So, um, so the, uh, the um, Skirbina uh, lead is basically saying that he's he believes it only to be that of like a chest X-ray or something like that. And then that's when the ghost of gets back in there and he's like, no, actually it's like more like 400 chest x-rays at a time. And, and he's seeing uh, the results from the report. It looks like it could be anything from like more like 4 million chest x-rays. So I mean, you're talking a crazy amount of radiation. Uh, so professor Logosov is basically fighting that 
battle against the politicians, right? It's that uphill battle you just almost never win. He explains it's like almost three million, billion, even trillion, like bullets, like firing outwards at you know in, in all directions. Or well, mainly the direction I guess where all the winds are carrying it. But let's face it, it's affecting a large area even around the facility, and that uh, they're going to keep firing for thousands of years. Uh, I mean, that just blows my mind, too. I mean, this, I think we've only been around for like a blink of an eye. And the, the idea that this radiation will be around long after we're probably gone. So uh, the winds will spread it across the whole continent. Rain will bring it down on everyone. Um, so basically, they order Lagosov to go with uh, Skrbina. Uh, again, that's Stellan Skarsgård's character to basically go to Chernobyl and check it out and come back with a full report. So um, just a little side note. So Vasily, it's um, uh, Ignan Tenko, I think, Igning Tenko. I'm going to say it a little bit wrong. Sorry, don't understand that Russian too well. But um, but basically, he's the firefighter. They had the wife that she was, you know, coming out and she was seeing all their people on her block going out to see the the incident. And anyway, so he's the main firefighter that was actually going up in towards the reactor to actually cool things down with the the hoses and whatnot. So he's at the hospital. She finds out that he's being flown out, airlifted out. Um, I found out. So that glow that we see from the that's from the radiation ionizing with the air, and again, again that's getting into big time details. But I thought that was just kind of interesting. Just I was like, because what is that glow actually from? And it is from the radiation, I guess, hitting the air, and then I guess like I said, ionizing and then making the glow. So that's that's the total layman's terms. What's going on there? Uh, but Skarbin is dumbass. He almost has their chopper as they're flying in. He's like, get over that hole. I want to see what's going on. And um, sorry. Uh, I almost forget his name, but Professor, Professor Lagosov, he's like, do not fly over that or we will be dead, if not immediately, within a week, you know, and so they're fighting it out right there, and Skrbina keeps trying to play this big tough man, well, I'll have you shot or thrown out of this helicopter and all this BS, and I'm like, I'm just like, see, this is the problem, this is the problem you don't have people who understand what is truly going on, and they're just, they're trying to play the big shot, the big wig, right? Um, again, I have notes here, guys, because this is just, this is so much information going on in this episode. So we uh so they don't fly over the hole, thank goodness. They end up landing and, and they we get back to them in a little bit. So Yulana, again, that's Emily Watson's character, she goes uh to the Communist Party headquarters on oh, this just this just fueled me so much. And it's basically telling them to issue iodine pills and to evacuate as fast as they can or it's gonna be too late. And uh basically again falling on deaf ears, and this a hole that she's talking to, she 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 very blatantly uh, calls out that he used to work in a shoe factory, and now he's the head, basically deciding for the lives of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, if this thing goes uh, super meltdown critical. And and this guy's just like, yeah, I, I used to, and now now I'm doing this, so get out of my office. I'm just like, oh, it's just for me, the, the stupidity of these people and what they're trying to do in this cover-up. Um so the I don't know if you guys remember the smug physicist. He had the glasses and uh, the, also that dark haired, kind of curly haired politician with a really raspy voice from the first episode. They were down kind of in the bunker and they kept defending their, you know, everything that was going on. They're like, no, there's no problem here. And anyway, so those two a holes um, are basically trying to embarrass Lagosov as they land and they're they're like, so uh, explain. And he starts pulling that crap again. Like, explain to me how the thing explodes. And of course, Lagosov doesn't fully understand it. He they have not gotten down to the root issue, and they're just like, yeah, that's what we figured. You know, luckily Skirbina, which was a total, I didn't expect it to happen. He decides to speak up on the flight over. He decided to ask a little bit about how the reactors work, and so uh, luckily he got the quick and dirty version, and he decides to use this information to his benefit to make these two guys look like complete idiots and make um Lugosa save some face pretty much right in there in that scene so that was good um and and it was so funny the dark-haired politician guy kind of then after that he kind of looks he kind of looks to the other physicist and he goes yeah yeah explain why the graphite's on the roof <laughs> like basically turn on each other at a blink i think as they understand the ramifications that are going to be coming their way when they find out whose fault this truly was which they're just as much as fault as this other guy and i'll get his name oh uh uh Diotlov. Um, that that was the that was the lead guy who threw up on the table. After he, he was playing hardcore all the way to the end. He was the one giving out orders, basically saying, "No, nope, it's not a blown reactor. It's it's you just need to lower the rods and all this other crap." So they're trying to pretty much blow uh, uh, blow it on him. So. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I put on here, just making a note of, so Lagosov takes the lead. Uh, so he basically takes this lead line truck with this the cylinder that has a super high range, and they want to drive it into the hot zone and basically see how much it is. They do drive it in, and it comes back with a reading of like 15,000. So I, I don't know if that's on the still the same scale at that 3.61, the REMS. I don't know if they, they didn't say 15,000 REMS, but they gave that number 15,000. And what it equated to was pretty much two times the amount of Hiroshima. 
but it's worse than that guys and this is where the exponential factor and i just didn't i just did not understand basically he says of hiroshima by each hour so 20 hours gone by it's like 40 hiroshima bombs that have been dropped that's the amount of radiation that's pouring out of this thing mind blown so uh, i just thought that was crazy um i mean that's effing insane that is just insane and and it's never going to stop oh well at least until they they get it under control it will not stop uh, so the physicist, uh, the smug one with the glasses, who basically now looks like it's all on him, he yells out as they're being taken away after Skrbina tells him to get these guys out of here. He yells out, it's Dyatlov. Uh, Dyat was, he was the man in charge. You know, so the, <laughs> let's say again, pointing the fingers so it doesn't come back on him. So Legoso's, uh, Professor Legoso's plan is to pour sand and this, um, I guess I don't know if it's a liquid or if it's actually a material, but it's like uh, it's called boron. And the boron I uh, looked up was actually used to prevent any further nuclear reactions. Okay, and then the sand is to smother the fire and whatnot. So he thinks that this is a good idea. They need. He has an estimate of like five thousand tons. I looked that up just to understand a little bit more about it. So a cubic yard of typical sand weighs uh, about twenty seven hundred pounds. I mean, you think about this, guys, and uh, that's the one point three five tons. So again, that's a little much. But so we're talking maybe. 2,300, 2,400 pounds of sand in each low going over there. I just, and that's that's one ton. They need 5,000 of those and probably even more. I mean, think about the amount of helicopters and things you'd have to take in just to get all this done. It is insane. I, I just can't believe this. So um, so April 27th, we're talking 30 hours after the explosion. Uh, the helicopters start bringing in the sand and the boron. We talked about that just briefly. And oh my God, Lagosov warns these a-holes do not go in. I think it was a 10-meter perimeter around that whole space where all the smoke and all that radiation is just centered at, at its worst. And the first helicopter, they get too close. They get too close and they even end up going into the middle. And they're trying to call into them, you know, through radios and they can't get to them. And I'm just watching. I'm just like, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen here? Because And he said, those men will be dead within a week. And the chopper finally, after about 20, 25 seconds, starts to kind of make its way out. And it just starts falling apart and just drops. I don't know if that was just from the amazing amount of radiation and everything hitting the helicopter itself, but I, I imagine whatever happened to those men and it was, it was not good, and it was such a concentrated amount, it just destroyed their innards, their, their bodies. Uh, what I understood was when radiation starts trying to, when it enters our body, our body, it's like an, we have like this um, immune system that basically uh, tries to immediately start fighting it. But the problem is it doesn't really understand how to truly fight it, and, and it's breaking down our body. We start vomiting and... Of course, death is definitely possible if you get enough uh, dosage. So, so anyways, that's not really working too well. Uh, the chopper again plummets down and is destroyed. And basically, Skirbana gives the next choppers um, the order to basically come in from the west, so they can try and use the wind to their advantage to try and blow, I guess, the sand and the boron, and it'll make, try and make its way into there. I mean, talk about a cluster, right? I mean, and there is no other way. I mean. Um, uh, Legosov's character is bringing their ch their chief guy. They're trying to go to for answers, and he's like, "I don't know what else to really do. This is this is the this is what we got to do. This is the sound idea." So, again, uh, Boris Skrbina is now faced to make a call to evacuate fifty thousand people that are in Pripyat, and he's he's uh, against it at first because he, he knows he knows what his uppers want him to do, and he's just he's just, he can't come down on it one way or another. Uh, even though Legosov and he, others are trying to kind of force him to do this. Uh, but basically, he's almost completely forced to do it when pretty much a Swedish nuclear plant uh, detects the amount of radiation coming their way, and they bring it back to pretty much, they figure out it's coming from Chernobyl. And uh, and then, like us Americans, got to gotta get into all the business, which, by the way, this is our business. This is the world's business. They end up flying over and getting shots, I guess, uh, film shots of the, of the plant, and now the world knows. Everybody knows what's going on. It's all over the news, Russian news, American news. Everybody knows what's going on, especially Europe. Um, so now that pretty much evacuations are going to have to start immediately. Uh, 36 hours after the explosion. Again, think about that exponential factor that keeps going on. I mean, these guys have no time. They have to get these people out. The evacuation begins, people only grabbing an item or two. I kind of relate this back to that. There was a movie, uh, I think it was called Chernobyl or Chernobyl Diaries. It was in 2012. Not a terribly great movie. It was kind of like a horror flick or whatever. But these kids, uh, uh, teenagers go in to basically see it as a tourist site and 
obviously there's people there from way long ago they're all deformed and they start getting taken out one by one but it was interesting just seeing all the people's their food was still on their tables you know they were only able to grab just a couple things and they had to go being loaded out by busloads just busloads of these innocents just going out and it was just such a crazy scene seeing this uh they had aerials like from the streets so amazing job by the crews just getting all these extras and to make this like everything just looks legit it looks perfect i love it it's it's great cinematography um I was going to say, even that other idiot uh, was saying that there was, oh, I'm sorry, I had to read my note here and understand what I was saying. Do you remember the old guy that was down in the bunker in the first episode, and he was like, uh, we should be proud of what we're doing here today. This is our time to shine, and cut cut the phone communications, and don't let people spread the rumors. That old guy, yeah, he's being loaded onto the bus, too. I wonder what's going through his mind as that's all going down. I'm just like, you piece of crap. You deserve to be strung up just with all these others. I mean, totally. Uh, we we come back to uh, Yolanda, the chief physicist. Remember, she was from that institute. She did the swab tests and everything else. That was uh, Emily Watson. That's the actress. She makes it um, to Lagosa and Skirbina uh, at Chernobyl. She she gets in. She gets arrested on the way in. And she says, well, take me to your top leader because they need to know what I know. So they get in there. She admits that she knows everything that's going on. And they're like, yeah. And so, well, she tells them uh, that they're doing the sand and the boron thing, which sounds like a good plan, but it's actually a mistake. And... Alugosov immediately starts to retract this, but basically they're saying that it's a problem because, and I'll get this just in the, the over thoughts that as I can, basically the sand will try to put out the fire, but this thing's going to keep heating up over time, and it's actually going to turn the sand almost into like this lava base, okay? And then this lava base is going to start melting through, I guess, the concrete blocks and things that are supposed to be protecting it, I guess, from below, and then the boron... I, I can't remember what the adverse effect was of that, but it, it wasn't going to help any anymore either. And basically, as this lava starts to heat up and so forth, there's these water tanks full. They're full of water. and But basically, once this lava hits us, you're, there's like an immense amount of water that's just going to immediately vaporize, and it's going to be like a thermal explosion. And I had to take some notes on this because I just didn't quite understand what they were talking about. But pretty much, it's like dropping more nuclear bombs, except they're not dropping a bomb. It's just exploding right there in the reactor. So... Basically, they're talking two to four megatons, so I was trying to, well, what's, what does that equal to? So it's up to 30 kilometers, totally destroyed, absolutely everything destroyed. And then um, it'll also uh, cause the other three actors to explode as well. So it's not like uh, nuclear bombs where they can make those and not detonate, you know, upon, upon another explosion nearby or something. Yeah, they're all going to go to, and this can, this can cause uh, another chain reaction that could hit up to another 200 kilometers outside of that range. And it can hit all the way to Kiev, affecting the Ukraine, East Germany, affecting cancer, food supplies, water sources, um, and a minimum of minimum of 100 years before things could be uh, re-inhabited again. I mean, I, I did not realize that this this whole cluster can go five billion times worse than what it actually did go. So I mean, obviously we know it didn't go this route, but it's seeing this this train wreck unfold. And so what I find this show so interesting. I hope you guys are too. So they have a plan to basically they need to get in and pump out the tanks. The only little problem with this, they need to send some men in that actually know the plan because nobody else does. And so these three men are going to have to navigate through pretty much this extremely radioactive water and it, not to mention just spewing out from the reactor itself. And it's pretty much guaranteed that this is a suicide mission. These three men will absolutely die, maybe within a week. It could be sooner. But uh, it's, a, it's a suicide mission. And so they end up going... Um, I'm sure that about 56 hours after the explosion. So Pripyat is now a ghost town. So they offer these guys, they're on the outskirts, I guess, getting ready to make this decision who's going to go in. They offer them like 400 rubles. Now, I was trying to look up the ruble to USD conversion or whatever, and I'm not sure I was getting it right. But what it was coming back was, I thought it was like, it was it was an extremely small amount of money. Let's just put it that way, okay? Because I don't want to get the figure wrong and sound like a moron already. But um, but basically, it was a super small amount of money. I'm like, you're not even offering these guys something decent. You're not even telling them that they're ultimately going to die. Except a couple of the guys start speaking up. They're like, we already saw the burns on the people. We know what's going on. Anyways, they know what they're going into. But amazingly, three brave men because they know what they have to do or the or the things that are going to happen. Uh, and they step up. They step up and decide to go in. I mean, you want to talk about the bravest of the brave. Uh, that's that's a big deal, guys. I I was just amazed. So they suit up and get ready to head in. And it's not like they're suit. They're not like lead lined or anything, guys. They just have like kind of scuba suits on because they know they're gonna have to go under the water in some areas and whatnot. And um, they have these decimeters on them that are measuring the amount of radiation. And as soon as they go in, it's already clicking. It's doing it. You know, it's clicking away. And um, 
and it, as they get in just a little bit deeper and just a little bit deeper into the water, they can see like where air is kind of spewing out of this one area of the water, and it's just the meter's just going off the chart. And I'm just like, oh my god, are these guys going to make it in? And then to compound it fifty thousand times worse, their flashlights start to go out. And I try to look up some information to understand how a radiation, you know, nuclear reactor going exploding like that, could that actually affect battery life, I guess, from flashlights and this and that? So I don't know if the flashlights were just crappy, if they got water on them. I, I, maybe you guys can comment in the comments and let me know. But uh, basically, guys, that's where it ends up in pretty much the pitch dark. You can hear them breathing. You hear the, the little meters going off the chart. And the, the, their mission looks like it's totally hosed. So obviously, we have some more to see. Um, we are not there yet. But, uh, gosh, guys, this, this show is just amazing. Sorry, I had to show my intro there again. I forgot to turn that off. Um, this show is, is awesome. I gave this a 9.0, as you may have saw on the thumbnail for this. It's just, there's a lot of great things happening. It's so, it's so much information it's tossing at us from our history, and it's mostly true, too. I mean, sure, they're going to embellish some things here and there, but I think they're, they're staying very, very true to the story and trying to uh, give us an understanding and uh, from the people's perspective and what they were going through and also the fight that they were trying to do just to get this this uh, this whole incident under wraps. So, um, again, what, what an amazing uh, series this is. I'm really looking forward to episode three. I just want to keep seeing more of it. I hope you guys also agree. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I will do another recap. I was tempted to do a live one on this. I know Dustin and I have been doing Game of Thrones, but... I wasn't for sure we'd get the amount of people watching this. I mean, if I get some comments in here that says, yeah, we'd like to do a live discussion or whatever about this. I mean, again, I don't know how much we can talk. None of us are physicists, so I, it's going to be pretty hard to probably talk these, this topic in general. But, hey, if you want it, um, I'm definitely willing to, to do it. We, we could do like a, maybe a 10 p.m. Central Standard Time a release on you know Monday evening, next Monday. So, anyway, give it some thought. Make sure to comment uh, down in the comments for me. Uh, make sure to follow us on uh, Twitter and Instagram if you want to see awesome zombie pics. Our Dead Nightmare series is out there. If you like zombie stuff, go out there and check out our series. Our episodes are only getting better with time, and we're, we're still pumping out new content. So, with that said, uh, I am Mike Schilling. This is The Z-Man Show, and we will see you at the next movie review. See you guys.